class. Welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher. I'm your accounting instructor. We've now gone over three of the four inventory costing methods that we're going to cover. The fourth one is specific identification. So in this one, most businesses don't use this method. It's used mainly for custom type products where there's, there's a differentiation. We want to keep track of our inventory items differently, like a sports car, like diamonds, like yachts, okay? But it is a legitimate method, so we need to go over that just to explain how it works. So we're using the same information. We're gonna assume that these soccer balls are custom. They're, they're really special soccer balls, and each one's slightly different. So we wanna keep track of them differently. And we purchase five at $10, and then we have 10 more at 11. So this is what we have in inventory, the 50 and the $110 worth. And now we're selling seven soccer balls. Well, in any of your homework problems, you know, however you're doing this, you need to know which seven you sold. It has to tell you exactly which seven were sold. So let's assume that we sold three of the five. So I'm gonna put in here for cost of goods sold, three at 10, and they tell you that you sold four of the $11 ones. So that's 30 and 44 for a total cost of goods sold in our journal entry of $74, okay? So like I said, the problem tells you specifically which ones were sold when you're doing homework, all right? So now let's look at what's in inventory. If we sold three of the five, then that means we have two left at 10. And if we sold four of the $11 ones, then that means we've got six left at 11. So that's what's in our ending inventory. Let's just continue with our example. We purchased five more at $12. So I've got the two at 10, six at 11, and now I've got five at 12. So there's my inventory. And now we sold six more. We sold them for $20, like we have in all the other examples, but we're calculating our cost of goods sold. So if we sold six, we've got to look at our inventory. So what we have, which six did we sell? Well, it'll tell us. So let's say they tell us that we sold those two at 10, and we sold three of the 11, and then one of the $12 ones. All right, so this is 20, 33, and 12, so that's five. Our cost of goods sold, we would debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory, $65. Let's finish this up. If we sold both of those, they're gone. If we sold three of the six, that means we've got three left at 11. And if we sold one of the $12 ones, then I've got, we have four left at 12. So this would then be your ending inventory, three at 11, four at $12, okay? All right, <clears throat> now let me just explain a couple of things. Uh, when you're looking at the inventory costing method, just because, for example, if you're using the FIFO method, it doesn't mean that the actual inventory goes off the shelves in a LIFO manner. For example, if you're thinking about a grocery store and milk, some students think, oh, well, we have to use the FIFO method for inventory costing. No, we don't have to use the FIFO method because we're not really keeping track of exactly which milks are being sold, okay? We want them to go out the door first in, first out, but for inventory costing purposes, we can use any inventory method we want. We can still use the FIFO method, the LIFO method, the average method, or specific identification if we wanted to, all right? The way they go off the shelves does not have to match the way that we're keeping track of them on our books, okay? Now, I'm gonna do one more video after this one, which is gonna show what happens with gross profit using each of these methods, all right? Gross profit is our sales minus the cost of goods sold, all right? So stay tuned for the next video. It will kind of wrap things up for us. See you soon.